happens. With tensions mounting, the Army pressed JPL to transform its research on a test missile into an operational weapons system to be deployed in Europe. Called the Corporal, this short-range missile was to be used near the front lines. Specifications called for hitting a target with relative precision at a range of 75 miles. In charge of building the Corporal was a Caltech professor destined to become JPL's next director, the New Zealand-born William Pickering. The taciturn Pickering lacked the flash of a Werner von Braun, but he was just as tenacious and as ambitious. When the army came to the lab and said, that, look, now the Germans have this V2, we want you guys to do some research on uh, trying to understand the uh, uh, longer range ballistic missiles, long range in those days being 100 miles, like a V2. The corporal rocket was a uh, radio controlled, radio guided uh, rocket. It, it performed reasonably well, although the fact that it was a um, rehash of a research device meant that it was never really a very good production rocket. Pickering had once half joked that JPL could do anything, but building the corporal proved a humbling assignment. While the first test went well, the next few were disastrous. You know, we had some that went, went south. The term went south means we fired them from uh, the launch area at, uh, in White Sands, and the firing range was north. Uh, and south of the firing range was uh, uh, was uh, Mexico and, and uh, Juarez and and uh, what have you. So uh, uh, it was not good to, to to go. But we had some that actually, instead of going up this way, they went up, went the wrong way. They they went south. As a way of acknowledging the rocket setbacks, JPL produced for the Army a self-satirizing film called The Corporal Story. The Army brass laughed at the film, but they continued to press to have the corporal deployed. Matters weren't helped by a list of growing requirements. Better accuracy was demanded under all kinds of weather conditions. Though originally envisioned as carrying an atomic warhead, the option of biological or chemical payloads was also tested. The complications of launching a corporal from White Sands paled in comparison with a launch attempt in the field. The toxic nature of the fuel made for hazardous conditions for the missile crew, even in a non-combat environment. The training of crews revealed that getting into firing position required as much as four hours of preparation, to say nothing of an entourage of trucks, equipment, and personnel that on an open road often stretched for more than a dozen miles. Once designed, the production line was turned over to industrial contractors. More than a thousand corporals would be built. With a reliability rating of only 60%, the corporal rushed into the field in 1955. Though marginal as a weapons system, the presence of the rocket was hoped to be a psychological deterrent, as the nuclear warhead the corporal carried was three times more powerful than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki.
By the mid-1950s, JPL had tripled in size. The work was serious and intense, but JPLers played just as hard. Think of a sport, any sport, and more than likely, JPL had a team. There were baseball teams, basketball teams, bowling teams, archery clubs, chess clubs, golf clubs, gun clubs, motorsports clubs, and even a UFO and a woodchopper's club. When they weren't competing for fun in the daylight hours, they might be found socializing and dancing the night away at the Elks Club. There were summer dances, fall harvest dances, masquerade dances, winter dances, and the spring coronation ball, where every year the laboratory director crowned a new Miss Guided Missile. The director by now was William Pickering, who reveled in this coronation beauty. Tequila. This beauty pageant contest was an eagerly awaited social event. Each year, competing groups at the lab mounted elaborate campaigns to have their candidate bestowed with the title of Miss Guided Missile. It was all a way to blow off steam, for back at work awaited their jobs, which one way or another, male or female, was about the serious business of building missiles for the Cold War. What the Army wanted next was a faster, less complicated, and more accurate missile. The answer was to go back to the solid fuels JPL had pioneered in the 40s to propel planes into the sky. Guided missiles. The purpose of sergeant firings, number 11 and 12, will be to test fire the first two fully guided experimental model sergeants to an assigned target. Two identical the sergeant was a second generation uh, to do about the same job, but to take advantage of all we learned and to know from the very beginning we were, we were starting, we started to design it for field use in a military situation. But relations with the Army were beginning to fray, especially when JPL cautioned that as many as 50 test rounds of the sergeant might be needed before arriving at a deployable system. It was pretty obvious that the, the lab was um, probably coming to an end with its work for the Army. Uh, the, the, the lab, as a part of Caltech, uh, was feeling that the work we were doing was not really uh, very appropriate. Pickering and others were envisioning a new future for the laboratory. If they had their way, the sergeant would be the last missile JPL would ever build. But the same 